Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some marriage of convenience romance recommendations for you. I love this trope so much <laughs> and so give me all the recommendations. If you have recommendations leave them down below. I do have one previous uh, marriage of convenience romance rec video that will be linked down below for you if you want to go check that out but I have 10 more recommendations today ranging from all different types of genres we have a mafia romance contemporary romance an alien romance historicals like I I put them all in here so let's get started the first one on this list is one of my favorites this is with you forever by Chloe Lees this is book four in her Bergman Brothers series I adore the series so much it's so good if you have not read this series yet you need to this is the romance between Axel and Rooney Axel is one of the Bergman brothers I believe he's the oldest Bergman sibling if I remember correctly he has decided to take it upon himself to fix the Bergman's like vacation camping home the a-frame home in the woods um, he actually owns a property close by he owns his own home no nearby um, but he's been struggling to kind of like refurbish the a-frame like funds are getting kind of low anyway one day Rooney decides to go to the a-frame because Willa is one of her friends and she is like the girlfriend to one of the Bergman siblings and Willa's like okay go to this house that they own like take a little vacation from I think she's in law school um, and just like recoup and so Rooney gets there to realize that everything is like broken down <laughs> because it's in the middle of being renovated so Axel finds her there and is like okay you know what how about you just stay at my place with me and we can get this all sorted out so they are in a forced proximity situation while they're staying in the same home you've seen them throughout the whole series kind of like giving longing looks at each other there might have been like a spin the bottle moment in a previous book between the two of them um so they've had these pent-up feelings for each other and they do have to get in a marriage of convenience because Axel realizes that in his uncle's will Axel can get a large inheritance if he is married and he wants to use that inheritance to fix up the crumbling A-frame home. So Rooney agrees. She's like, why the heck not? And so this starts a marriage of convenience between the two of them. And I love it so much. It has wonderful pets in here too. Um, as you can see, there's a cat and a dog. I think the dog's name is literally Harry Styles. Like, it's really cute. And there's also great autism representation. Um, Axel is autistic and Rooney has ulcerative colitis. So there's that representation. I really, really, really liked that rep in here. Next is a mafia read. This is Painted Scars by Neva Altaj. And this is also kind of like a, I'm gonna blackmail you to marry you situation on top of it being a marriage of convenience. This is about Nina and Roman. Roman is the Russian mafia boss, is a Russian mafia boss. And he was in a car accident a few months ago that left him with the inability to walk. Um, he's in physical therapy and he's really trying to get to the end goal of being able to walk with a cane. But as of right now, he is a wheelchair user and he also uses crutches to walk as well. Anyway, he thinks that his position is in danger. Like he's gonna get overthrown for being a mafia boss because other people are gonna think that he's weak for being a wheelchair user. Um, so he's like, how can I solidify my standing in the mafia? I think if I am married, that will definitely help me and my wife can help me secure my position. He realizes that one of the guys who owes him money has a very attractive daughter. So he basically goes up to Nina one day and is like, you need to marry me for this amount of time. And in exchange, I won't kill your father because he owes me quite a large sum of money. So he basically blackmails her to marry him. It's definitely more of a major convenience for Ronan because he just needs a wife to secure his position in the mafia. But Nina is more so in the marriage because of blackmail reasons. For her, it's like a forced marriage situation. Um, but I really love the disability representation in here and um, I thought this was a really short, good mafia read. Next, I have The Marriage Effect by Carla Sorensen. This one is quite popular when it comes to marriage of convenience romances. This one is about Logan and Paige and they both need to get married for their own respective reasons. This is another like inheritance situation. So Paige needs her aunt's inheritance and the only way that she can get that is by being married. And then Logan has the sole custody of his, I believe, four younger sisters and he is in trouble of like losing his custody to his crappy other brother who he knows will not take care of them as well as he will. So the two of them meet each other one night. Um, I believe he's a football player and she's roped in to helping the football team out or her friend works for the football team. Anyway, um, they get roped up, meet each other and by some happenstance, 
they realize that they can just get married to help each other out. And obviously that marriage of convenience turns into something way more. They end up falling in love with each other. I really love the familial aspects of this book. Like that was amazing. Logan with his sisters was great. And even Paige with the sisters, I really loved learning about their relationships. I thought the marriage of convenience part in here was very interesting because they first realize that uh, this can work out when she pretends to like be his fiance in order to, I think, give him his wallet or phone in the hospital and she can't go past a certain point without being a family member. And so she claims to be his fiance and they're like, oh wait, I think this can actually work out. So that was very interesting. Next is A Friends to Lovers Romance. This is Like You Love Me by Adriana Locke. This one is about Sophie and Holden and they were childhood best friends and they've basically been friends ever since then. They grew up in this very small town together. Sophie now owns this, I think, bed and breakfast and Holden has gone off to college and he is now a veterinarian and he has been called back to the small town to help his, I believe, grandfather with his... Um, like vet business while he's on vacation, um, just to like fill in with him while he's gone. But then he gets this opportunity to possibly work for like the best vet facility like in the country. And um, the guy who runs that facility is a very much a family man. And so Holden is like, the best way I think I can get this job is by convincing him that I'm in a very stable relationship and like that I'm married to somebody. And I believe um, Sophie just needs more money for her bed and breakfast. like she's in trouble of it getting like taken out from under her. And I think Holden convinces her like, I'll give you this money if you help me and get married to me to show this guy that I'm a family man. And so that definitely changes up their friend dynamic. Um, the two of them have to spend more time together. And um, like Holden hasn't really been in this small town, like close to Sophie in quite a long time. And so they're forced to like spend more time together. And they definitely obviously fall in love through all of that. Next I have Western Waves by Brittany Cherry. This is about Damien and Stella. Stella um, and Damien are connected in a way they never thought possible. So Stella growing up, she had her mother and her grandmother and her mother's best friend, who is a man, I forget his name. Anyway, he basically thinks of Stella basically as his own. Her mother ends up dying and he basically adopts her and um, like that's her father, like her father figure. That is her parent now. Like he just means the world to her. She's now like all grown up. I think she's in her like late 20s and this man, her father figure ends up passing away and the will is being read and this young man shows up and his name is Damien and he has no clue that this man is his long lost father. He never knew who his biological parents were and it turns out it was this man and Stella never knew either. In the reading of his will, he basically says that Stella and Damien have to get married in order to receive a large sum of money in order to get an inheritance because he was very rich. So the two of them have to get married in order to get the inheritance. There's a bunch of other things going on in here. This is very grumpy sunshine. Stella is the sunshine and Damien is definitely the grump in here, um, but I very much enjoyed this one as well. Ooh, one of my favorite fantasy romances has this trope in it. When it's a fantasy romance, it works so well, like a marriage of convenience. So A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Vane, like, it's so good because this is also enemies to lovers. So when it's marriage of convenience, enemies to lovers, like, oh my gosh, so good. This is the romance between Madek and Yven. So Madek in here is like a barbarian warlord and his parents just got murdered and he's out for revenge on the person who killed his parents. He gets a rumor. He hears a little birdie tell him that um, it turns out it's this princess who is responsible for his parents' deaths, who is Yven. So he's out to go find this woman and get revenge basically. But Yvonne ends up finding him first and telling him, wait, 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 I did not kill your parents. My father is responsible and I know the perfect way to get back at him. We need to get married and overtake his throne. That then we can kill him. Like that's the perfect solution, okay? Like I want my father gone. Um, so the two of them do not care for each other because Maddox does not believe 100% like at all that Yvonne is not somewhat responsible for his parents dying. And throughout this book, she's trying to convince him like she had nothing to do with it. And they just like hate each other. But in order to save each other's peoples, they get married um, and then obviously to enact revenge um, because Yvonne's father did some messed up things to 
Maddox family and to Yvan herself and her mother. This world is fantastic. Mila Bain has amazing world building. If you have not read this series yet, what are you doing if you love fantasy romance? An alien romance that I have is Choosing Theo by Victoria Aveline. I love this book so much. Okay, so this is the romance between Jade and Theo. Jade was abducted from Earth, from her home by some evil aliens, but then she ends up getting like dumped on this planet called Clucania. She knows nothing about the people on this world or this strange planet, but uh, there's like one common rule amongst the women on the planet and that is that you have to be married at all times. That's because I think there's like a shortage of women and in order to like increase their population, like women need to be married and produce as many children as possible, basically. Jade in here is required to choose a husband now that she's on this planet. And um, she ends up choosing Theo and everyone else is shocked because Theo has like scars all over his body and these alien people really revere perfection. And so he's not very attractive according to alien his alien species and jade is like baffled she's like this man is stunning what are y'all talking about like y'all are crazy anyway so theo has to have jade like move in with him and they're married now and theo doesn't believe that jade picked him for the right reasons he's like she must be like a spy or something because there's no way that this gorgeous woman would want me like there's no way um so he's very grumpy at first because he doesn't believe that jade actually wants him for him uh but man she does and she tries to show him in every way possible and he does some groveling like ugh, it's so good also i just want to say if you're not a fan of alien romances um because like aliens are like too much for you these people basically look like humans like they look like humans they just have like different customs because they're from a different planet so take that up what you will if like aliens like freak you out maybe like try the series out because he like the cover is very much what he would look like so speaking of weird looking aliens <laughs> next one is i married a lizard man by regine abel <laughs> This is also like a male order bride situation on top of it being a marriage of convenience. This is the romance between Susan, who's a human woman, and Alex, who is like the alien creature on the cover. She leaves the only world she's ever known in order to start a new life with a strange alien and his species that she has no information about whatsoever, but she needs to get married um, to just better her life. She wants a new life for herself. And Alex needs to get married to make a better life for his people and to show his people that he is going to be a good leader. He needs to have a wife. And so thus starts their marriage of convenience, male order bride situation. She ends up marrying Alex like right when they meet each other on his planet and he brings her home with him to his people and just like learn their ways and their customs. And it's very much a friends to lovers situation. Um, Alex and Susan really wanted to develop their like personal relationship with each other um, before anything physical happens between the two of them. And I really enjoyed that part of the book. The last two books that I have are historical romances. First, I have Devil in Winter by Lisa Kleypas. This is one of the most iconic marriage of convenience romances to me. This is the romance between Sebastian and Evie. This is book three in the Wallflower series. And you got to read Sebastian in the previous book in the series, be basically the villain of the story. And so Evie in here is one of the Wallflower friends and she needs to get married in order to get away from this horrible marriage situation that her extended family is trying to put her in. They're trying to get her to marry her cousin so that he can inherit her fortune and like they're being very abusive towards her and so she thinks the only way someone will marry her is if they're really needing some money because she's gonna have this large inheritance when she gets married. Um, so Sebastian the main reason why he was the villain in book two is because he needed some money. And so she goes up to Sebastian and is like, okay, I don't really like you. We don't like each other. It's fine, but I need to get married and you need money. Let's do this. And Sebastian's like, fine. They run off to Gretna Green to get married and come back. And they are now married and have to deal with married life together. Sebastian at first just doesn't really care about Evie. Like he's sweet regardless. Like he's a very respectful, kind man, but like he doesn't really know Evie all that well and just sees her as this woman with a stutter who's very shy and sheltered um but then once he gets to know her he ends up becoming a total puddle for this woman and i loved it evie i love seeing her confidence just grow in this book especially with being married to a man like sebastian her confidence just grows tenfold the last book that i have to mention is also another historical where one of the characters was a villain in the previous book of the series okay so Heartless Duke by Scarlett Scott. The heroine in here was the villain in book one. Um, and basically this series, the League of Duke series, this is book two in the series. League of Duke series is about Dukes who are part of this special league of like spies who are in charge of like taking down this group of terrorists called the Fenians. 
Anyway, so our heroine here, um, she ends up doing something not so great in book one and the hero of this book ends up kidnapping her and taking her to his estate and keeping her there to interrogate her um, and to figure out why she did what she did and all this stuff. And the only way to like keep her in his home at one point is to marry her. So it's like a kidnapping to, to marriage situation. And that's all I want to say about that one because I don't want to spoil anything. Um, I think like even just saying that she's like a villain in, pre in book one was a little bit of a spoiler anyway, but um, I don't want to say anything else, but this book was really entertaining and the marriage and convenience part in here was super super interesting to read about. Anyways, there you have it. Those are 10 romance books with the marriage of convenience trope. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. I would love to know. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any wedding related emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.